Hey guys, Kate Kennedy here, and I'm excited to be sharing my first process video using the June kit. So I've just pulled out um, mostly things from the main kit, but I think one or two are, are from the embellishment add-on. And I've selected some pattern papers, and I think this is going to change a little bit, but I really love this combination of papers. Um, two are from Fancy Pants. That one is from the Poolside collection from Crit Paper, and the bottom one is from Simple Stories. And I'm going to be thinking I'm going to use a piece of white cardstock, but I will change that to craft cardstock in just a little bit. So I'm just looking for something else to mat behind the photo. I'm feeling like there's too much white, and if I was going to use a white background, then I wanted a more solid um, layer behind the picture to have a high contrast so that it stands out really well. But you'll see I end up changing this whole plan in just a few minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cut the branding strip off of this paper. It is so, so pretty. I don't end up using it in this layout, but it is definitely the inspiration for the background that I create because I really wanted something that looked like this paper without being, without using this paper. I want it to be a little more mixed media looking, I guess. That's, is that a term? I guess it is a term now. So I'm going to use my notebook punch on this um, poolside paper. I really love that punch. It's probably one of my most used ones. I think it just adds a really nice layer. And if you don't have it, I think there's a cut file on Silhouette that you can use to create the same kind of look. Or you could just use regular notebook paper that you rip out that has the same edge, which also looks really nice. So this is what I think I'm going to do. And then you'll see I change to the craft because I think it's because of um, Jack the dog's coloring. I think the craft just looks really nice with it instead of and I felt like the white was too stark white. It just didn't, it just wasn't working. I just, I'm going to fuss around with some embellishments for a minute and then I'm going to realize that what I really want to do is create a watercolory background and I'm going to do that with distress inks and I'm going to um, talk in real time about, I'm doing the voiceover now, but in just a second it's going to switch to real time. And I'm going to try to make sure the volume's the same, but I'm going to explain to you what I'm doing with the Distress Ink. So here that comes. Okay, so I decided that I wanted to add some ink to the background of the craft cardstock. And so I did a little experimenting with some different Distress Ink colors on craft paper because they show up very differently on craft paper than they do on white cardstock. So I just wanted to see what it was going to look like. And I just did some little samples and I came up with these oops, with these colors and I really like them and they are Salty Ocean, Tumbled Glass, Cracked Pistachio, this one is Squeeze Lemonade, this is a combination of Sparse Marmalade and Dried Marigold over here which is what I liked, uh, Picked Raspberry and Festive Berry. So my idea is to kind of do a rainbow of these colors on the side of the light, like from here up, like on this part, um, just to give it some interest. Or I may do it this way, like a diagonal. Maybe I'll do a diagonal, that might be cool. Okay, so I'm going to now put it back on to fast forward and do the voiceover and kind of show you my process in doing this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is kind of mark where the layers of the paper are just so I can make sure that I get good color around it to kind of give the contrast I'm looking for for the picture to stand off the page. And the way I'm going to do this is a very complicated technique. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. All you do is take your ink pad and tap it onto some, this is like packaging from a, from a set of thickers that I just cut up, spray some water on it and then smush it down onto the paper. And that's it, you don't need a brush. You don't need any fancy tools. All you need is some water and some ink and some old packaging. Or you could use like a piece of acetate or um, probably even wax paper would work. Um, any, it's just a very uncomplicated 
way of getting a watercolor look and I really love the way that it turns out. The Where I saw this technique done was by Idiot who is also a hip kit club member. She was the first person I saw do this and it is like, I don't know if she invented it or what, she was just the first one I saw and it has exploded like all over. I've seen people doing this and I think it's just a great technique. And I'm really thankful that she shared that with us. So I'm just hitting this with the heat gun because I don't really want the colors to mix too much. I'm being careful to use colors that won't create like a muddy brown. But as you can see, I'm just going to repeat this process with all of the different colors. And I'm not going to make you watch all of that. And when I come back, it'll be all finished. So there you go. And sometimes you get those dark splotches and it doesn't dry like that. It dries really nice and smooth. I was a little worried because I didn't like the way those dark places looked, but it totally turned out just fine. And I'm just using a little um, baby wipe to wipe up some of the excess. So here it is all dry. I did let it dry naturally for the most part, just because I feel like it warps less when you don't use heat on it. And I'm taking this super strong Tombow adhesive and putting it pretty much all over the back and I'm going to mount this on a piece of white cardstock so I trimmed it down just a little bit. I find that with most watercolored backgrounds you need to put something behind it even if you you know make it a 12 by 12 behind it where you can't even see it just because it really helps to smooth out the paper and if you do it kind of from top to bottom or left to right and like smooth it along with your hand like I'm doing here you can get it really flat and it looks really good. So that is the background. I really love the way it turned out. I started thinking I was just gonna do a portion of the paper and I ended up covering the entire piece of craft cardstock, but I just love the way these distress inks look on that craft cardstock. I was really happy with the result. So I did end up not using that Simple Story paper because I made the background that looked like the Simple Stories paper. So I'm just going to cut this down because I want that little notebook edge to kind of hang off and have the background come through it. And I'm just going to use a stapler to staple these layers together. I just find that that's super easy and it saves adhesive. Um, and then I'm going to put my picture on foam um, adhesive. I almost always put my picture up on foam because I use so many layers that I just really want it to stand out and this foam is not very thick. It's pretty thin. It's not anywhere near as thick as like a um, like a foam circle, a pop dot. It's not as thick. It's probably half the thickness of like foam dots. So it just gives it a little bit, probably the same amount of height as if you used a glue gun but I, I'm scared to use a glue gun on a picture. I think it might melt it or something. So I'm going to use this Tombow um, adhesive again because of those layers are pretty heavy, you know, and that adhesive really holds well. So I'm just sticking that down and then I'm going to add my picture. I really should have edited this part out. It is not very interesting. And then I'm going to try to figure out how I want to embellish it. And unfortunately, some of the embellishing that I did, I did off camera because I looked at it and I was like, it still needs something, but I'll explain when I show the pictures what I added and, and why and everything. So now I have the main main thing down and I've pulled these three stickers from the poolside sheet and they coordinate perfectly with the colors that I've added. So I'm just going to use a little bit of glossy accents and stick the red sticker like in the red area and then a yellow one in the yellow area and a kind of greenish blue one in the blue area. So I had to, it was the gas company that called, that they were, they were um, at our house and I had to go and deal with them. So then I came back and that's why it kind of changed for a second. So, or it's a minty color. That's a minty color. And the yellow, and then I'm going to put the red one on the right. I really like that. Um, I guess it's like tone on tone, you know, putting pink with pink and yellow with yellow and green with green. Then I find this really cute little ticket that says well, like the thing for June, which I think is really fun because I took this picture in June, I believe. And then I'm going to use this little sticker and, or it's a 
die cut. I'm using mainly the die cuts from the poolside line and then these Evilicious wood veneer. And I'm going to use the little Instagram camera. And also, it's a little, I love the ones that, I think I talked about this one in my unboxing video, that like can go on top of a photo. They're flat on one side. So you can, or like at the top of a layout, like that one that says observations, I'm going to put in the upper left hand corner. I really love those wood veneer. I find them really easy to use and I just like the way that they look on layouts. So I'm going to put this little Instagram camera over there on the right. And then I pulled this sticker. It's a label sticker and it's like half pink and half yellow, I believe. And I'm just going to stick half of it underneath that little observation so that it kind of shows up better and it's not just kind of floating up there all by itself. It has something else with it. And let's see, what am I going to do next? I'm going to go down the little wood veneer with the glossy accents. For I felt I recorded this a while ago and I'm just doing a voiceover now, so it's like a week later. It's hard to remember exactly what you did. And I feel like that bottom right hand corner is kind of not embellished enough. So I find this really cute little strip that has like plus signs on it. And I'm going to stick a little portion of that. And then I'm going to add another half of a label on top of that. I really like using those, like taking labels and cutting them in half. But it's a good place to put the date and I wanted to add the date to this layout. And I think that I don't want to add a title, but what I end up adding is some of the cork stickers from the Journey collection that we got. I added the love, I think it says the word love, yeah. And then I also added some enamel dots in the color grouping. So red on red, yellow on yellow, mint on mint, and blue on blue. And I think that that really kind of finishes off and highlights the fact that I put in like color coordinated embellishments, I think it just, instead of just having like one lonely sticker floating around, it kind of makes it look like a, a thought out thing. And a lot of those enamel dots were left over from other, you know, previous hip kits. So I do like to use, you know, some products that I have in my layouts if it's something that, that I need to add to it instead of just, you know, trying to stick exactly to the kit, which it's pretty easy to do. I don't usually add too much, but I thought those little enamel dots were just a really nice finishing touch. So you can see here in this picture real quick, the title I added, and then I'll show you um, where I added the enamel dots. I just think they make a big difference. So you can see there, I have yellow and mint and blue. And then this is the final layout. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next week. Bye.